Welcome back. In this video, I'll be talking about the DS3231 real-time clock. Specifically, I'll explain how to use the square wave output from the real-time clock as an interrupt signal for the Arduino to refresh its date and time settings once every second. So let's get started. I wanted to learn about using the DS3231 real-time clock. So I decided on Adafruit's DS3231 Precision Real-Time Clock Breakout Board. So after soldering the 6-pin header in place, installing the battery, and wiring it to my Arduino Uno, I installed the recommended library, uploaded the example sketch, and I was up and running. What is immediately obvious is that the Arduino is reading and transmitting date and time information once every three seconds. This is because there is a three second delay in the sketch. But I would like to see time displayed to the nearest second. I can change the delay from 3000 to 1000 milliseconds, but one second of delay is an awfully long time for the Arduino to sit and do nothing. I can also remove the delay, allowing the Arduino to read time and date information as fast as it can from the real-time clock. But this is putting the Arduino through a lot of unnecessary work, especially if all I want to do is update the time once per second. So the option I chose is to use the SQW pin of the DS3231 and configure it for a precise 1 Hz square wave output. And using this output, I can configure the Arduino Uno to trigger on a falling edge. Every time there's a falling edge, that will trigger the Uno as part of the interrupt. It will be the interrupt signal that tells the Uno it's time to update the date and time readings. So once that interrupt occurs, the UNO will communicate over I squared C and request updated date and time from the DS3231 real-time clock. In addition, I've added two LEDs, a red LED and a green LED. The green LED is just to confirm if everything's working properly, if I've configured this properly, the green LED should flash once per second. Likewise, if the software is running properly, we should see the red LED briefly flash in time with the green LED completing the loop. So returning to the DS3231 example sketch, I've made some modifications. First off, I assigned pin 2 on the Arduino and named it SQW input and this pin will be used to monitor the square wave 1 Hz output of the DS3231. Next I created a variable called edge and this variable will be used to store when a falling 1 Hz clock edge has occurred on the SQW pin off of the DS3231. Then within the setup of the real time clock module I added this line. RTC write square wave pin mode square wave 1 hertz. This is what's used to set up the SQW pin to output a 1 hertz square wave and this is unique to the RTC lib library. Next the SQW input pin is set to an input and then the internal pull-up resistor is set high because the SQW pin of the DS3231 is an open drain output. Next, the SQW input pin, pin 2, needs to have an interrupt associated with it, and that's achieved with attach interrupt digital pin to interrupt SQW input, which is pin 2. The name of the interrupt routine, I just named it ISR, and then what it will interrupt on is a falling edge so it's configured to trigger the interrupt on the falling edge of the SQW 1 Hz signal from the real-time clock module. Next, edge is set equal to 1, and this is the initial setting. And then in the main loop, we will be waiting for an interrupt service routine to be triggered, and once it's triggered, it will make edge equal to 0. 
Next is our interrupt service routine, ISR, and its job is to clear edge or make edge equal to zero on a falling edge if a falling edge is detected on the SQW pin. Now for the main loop, we test if edge has been made equal to zero by the interrupt service routine up above. If it has, then update the time displayed on the clock. So if edge equals zero, we execute display time, which is down here. Note that in the original example code, this was the main loop. And I've just simply named, renamed it display time. Once display time is finished, we return, and now edge is set back to one. So the time will not be updated again until another falling clock edge is detected on the SQW input or the Arduino. And that's the display time routine. So if we go ahead and upload the sketch, and take a look at our serial output, now we're updating once every second, so that's working. And as you can see, our LED indicators are behaving the way we expect. Our SQW output is indicating, is being, our SQW output is being indicated by the green LED at a once per second rate, and the red LED on our I squared C SDA line is flashing at once per second, indicating that when the interrupt is detected, the communication on I squared C is enabled and we're getting a time, and we're getting our time information, our updated time information. Now, if I just remove this yellow wire, connected to the SQW pin, which is going to pin 2 on the Arduino. SQW is still toggling, but now the Arduino is no longer getting its interrupt, and so time is not being updated, which we expect. So now if we reconnect SQW, And now we get our interrupts and everything's working just fine. And that's an example of how to use the one hertz output of the DS3231 as an external interrupt for the Arduino. If you found this information useful, or if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.